Um, so I'd like to start by saying that uh, Wikilove's Monuments actually is in the Guinness Book of Records now for the biggest photo competitions in the world. So that's, thank you. It's not my, my job, but. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm the first one from, uh, except for, uh, for the previous doctor here, um, um, from another country. And I apologize for speaking English. I, I don't know German very well, so I would probably end up um, insulting you even more if I spoke German. Um, so I would, um, I would also like to, um, I would also like to say that I would very much have liked to uh, stay on for the rest of the conference, but unfortunately, I am a Wikipedia in a residence, as you can read on the on the sign here, um, at the National um, Heritage Board of Sweden. So, in a way, we're colleagues, the previous speaker and I. Um, so, uh, let's begin. Uh, I'll promise I'll keep this section short because I know you know everything about Wikipedia, right? Uh, but if you're gonna have a collaboration with somebody, it's good to know who you're gonna have the collaboration with. So we'll start here. Uh, the first thing is that you have to divide Wikipedia into several different pieces. And the first part is it's an encyclopedia. Of course, everybody knows that it's an encyclopedia and it has rules and, and so on. But the next part is also very crucial and it's that there is a community as well. And while, uh, while you can't really deal with Wikipedia per se, you always have to go through the community. And I'll talk a little about that um, in a bit. But there's also a third part, which is there are uh, organizations that support Wikipedia. And, and one of them is represented here today and is part of, of the organizing team, um, the Wikimedia Deutschland uh, chapter. Uh, I come from uh, the Swedish chapter. I was one of the founding members there and was uh, the chair of that uh, chapter for a very long time. And now I'm just a member and I go around and, and talk about Wikipedia. So that's basically one of the things that I do. Um, so, uh, why work with Wikipedia? Um, well, here's one reason. I don't know if you can see the graph here, so I'll explain it a little bit to you. At the bottom here of this table, there's a few squiggly lines, and it's the New York Times, it's CNN, it's BBC News, it's Merriam-Webster, it's MSN and Carta, if anybody remembers that. And then there's Wikipedia, and it's way, way above all the others. And I know that you don't count clicks, but this is actually one of the things that you're supposed to be doing, namely, vermittling, right? You're reaching people this way. So that's actually one of the things, but that's not a really, really good reason, right? You're not going to do it anyway, because I, I showed you this graph. And it's actually grown much higher. It's almost up to half a, a billion viewers each month. Half a billion viewers. Unique visitors to the site. And this is not a reason either. Um, this is a horse and carriage, and it's a little bit insulting, but I, I'm, I'm sure that you know that some of you aren't considered the most advanced organizations in the world. You're not the dot-com um, people. Uh, and personally, I like you, but uh, there's, there's a risk that you're going to be extinct if you don't cooperate with people like us. And it's a, not a very good reason to do it. But here is a good reason to do it. We're doing the same thing for the same reason, for the same people in the same medium. Let's do it together. Right. This was said by Liam Wyatt, who was the first Wikipedian in residence at the British Museum a couple of years ago. And he's a pleasant guy. 
I, I've met him several times, and he, he knows a little bit of Swedish. He actually studied in Sweden for a while. But this is why you should work with Wikipedia, because we have the same target group. We're, we're doing the same type of things, really. We are. Um, so let's do it together. It's more efficient that, that way. There's no need to reinvent the wheel every time you need to do something. So let's do it together. Uh, so let's go on to the next thing here. And that is, how do you cooperate with Wikipedia? How many people, could I just have a show of hands real quick? How many have cooperated with Wikipedia? How many organizations? And, and please, this is raising your hand. Okay, so not an overwhelming part of the audience, which is good because there's room for improvement. Uh, but, okay, so let's uh, deal with how you cooperate with Wikipedia. The first thing is that you could really, really tie the two parts together. Uh, I, I tend to divide Wikipedia as an encyclopedia and Wikipedia the community because there are some very different different things happening there. For instance, on each language version of Wikipedia, there's a different culture, and the Wikipedians are different, and the rules can be very, very different. So you need to know that. But for this, uh, this discussion, we'll, we'll treat it as one. But let's start with dealing with the organization. Okay, so this is some some of the things that you can do when you collaborate with a Wikimedia organization. This is actually an editathon, and if you've never heard the word before, I can't blame you, it's not a well known word, but an editathon is a place where you come together and basically edit articles in Wikipedia. And it's not a difficult thing to organize, really. You just grab a couple of computers and Maybe some pizza and and, and off you go, off you're gone. So um, it's not a difficult thing to do. And one of the things that organizations can do more quickly than individuals is organize this type of things. We can also do photo safaris, which is when we're collaborating with a glam institution, as we call them. I don't know if you've heard the term glam: galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. We tend to lump them all together, but of course we see you as the individual organizations as well. Uh, but one of the things that we can do when we collaborate is to have a photo safari or a photo scavenger hunt, where we come to the organization uh, or to the gallery or to the museum and take pictures of massive amounts of, of things uh, fairly quickly, because we're so many. And we don't have to do it perfectly, because face it, let's face it, you don't either. You don't do it perfectly either. Uh, but what we can do is organize those kinds of things, uh, and they tend to be very, very productive. Many things get done during these, uh, these types of photo safaris. Then we can hold courses, of course. Um, we can have uh, training sessions. This is actually a training session as well, and not only an editathon. We, we, we met a, uh, a number of new people there and they started making their first edit to Wikipedia. So that's one thing that, oh, sorry. So that's one thing that, that you can do as an organization. And of course, we're very happy to help when it comes to, um, to advice because we have a rather large uh, and lengthy uh, experience when it comes to uh, copyright and free licenses and of course how to deal with Wikipedia. So come to us. It's usually Wikimedia dot and then the country code. So for instance here in, in Germany it's DE. So contact them please. They're very good people. Okay, so um, one thing that we can, can do that's very difficult to put into pictures, which is why I don't have a picture of it here. But we can actually do uh, memoranda of understandings as well. We can have treaties or contracts with 
with um, organizations on a higher level, or let's say uh, on a nearly politically high level. So in Sweden we have um, a treaty or a memorandum of understanding with the council. Let's see here. It's it's magic. It's ma I'm sorry. Here, I'll leave this here. So uh, we have a council. Let me check what's the actual names. The Council of Swedish Central Museums is the name. And, and they, they're an uh, umbrella organization of several different museums. And by going directly to them, uh, we can make a, a more efficient um, training session uh, program. Or we can deal with best practices across the board instead of going to individual museums and archives. Uh, so that's one of the things that you can do when you go to an organization and talk to them. Another thing is, like with me, the guy on the left there is Liam Wyatt, the first Wikipedian in residence. But the, the other three are also Wikipedians in residence. And all in all, there are about 40 of us in the world. I am, as I said, at the National Heritage Board in Sweden, but there has been a, at at national libraries, there has been at children's museums, there has been at archives and, and many other places. And uh, it's often very, very productive because we can serve as the liaison between uh, the institution and the Wikipedia community. Uh, and that can be really, really helpful. We can also uh, serve as teachers. Um, and when I say teachers, I mean that in a loose term, because we have so much to learn from, from museums and archives and, and galleries and libraries. Uh, but we also know a lot of how Wikipedia works, so we, we're gladly, uh, we'll gladly teach you that if you, if you want us to. Um, another thing that we can do is to uh, have metrics for you, because we know as I said, how Wikipedia works, and we know how to get the statistics. So if you want statistics, if you want the clicks to see how many people click on your link, that's one of the things that we can get for you. By the way, when I talk about clicks, I, I, I just remembered something. Um, this is a short story. In May of 2009, uh, the article about the rare skin disease called vitiligo had about 100 viewers uh, per day on English Wikipedia. But then, in June of 2009, it suddenly got more than a million on one day. Can anybody here guess why that was? And Wikipedians are not allowed to answer. Anybody? Michael Jackson died. Michael Jackson died, Michael Jackson had vitiligo, and more than a million people wanted to know about his rare skin disease, and they went to Wikipedia. And you never know what the next thing that people will want to search for uh, on Wikipedia or on the web at, at all. Another thing is that um, you may, kn may not know this, but people actually click on the links in Wikipedia. They do that a lot. And they use the sources that are at the bottom of the, of the website. And I'll, I'll prove this to you. A couple of years ago, there came a movie called Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I'll, I'll not ask you to raise your hands if you've seen it. Okay, so that was the fourth Indiana Jones movie. And people thought that the title was a little bit too long. So in Google, they just wrote Crystal Skull. So they went to Wikipedia, which was the first hit there. And on Wikipedia, you didn't get the article about the film, which they actually wanted. Instead, they got the, the article about the artifact, the Crystal Skulls that exist at the British Museum. And the crystal skulls, if you don't know that, they're fakes. 
So it's a quite an interesting story because they claim to be several thousand years old, but they're really just like 200 years old or something like that. But anyway, people thought that this uh, article was so interesting that they read through it, and we, we can measure this. They read through it and they clicked on the deep links in Wikipedia at the end of the article having read through this whole article about the crystal skulls, which uh, they weren't interested in from the start. And then they went to the articles and essays that scholars have been written about crystal skulls at the British Museum. The British Museum has never had so much internet traffic as when the movie about the crystal skulls and, of course, Indiana Jones came out. So it's important to actually link deeply into your, uh, into your material, because people will, believe it or not, they will actually read it. Okay, so cooperating with, uh, by um, Wikipedians and residents is also one way you can do it. By the way, am I talking too fast? Okay, Sh should I ask the questions more slowly, perhaps? Oh, okay, so what you can do with Wikipedia instead, okay, sorry, I won't be doing that. Okay, so what you can do with Wikipedia is, of course, you can do what any normal person would do. You could just edit Wikipedia. You could add your content to this humongous database um, like any other person would. That's... That's something you can do. You can upload pictures to our media database and you can do all the things that other stuff, uh, other people do. So that's one way you could do it. You, you're actually allowed to do it. But we encourage you to not write about yourselves because we know that's a little bit of a problem of keeping yourself neutral, if you know what I mean. Okay. So this is a symbol. It's... I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of people there. And there's a, a, a big word that come up now and then when you talk about Wikipedia and when you talk a lot about other uh, net-related stuff, and it's called crowdsourcing. Have you heard about that, crowdsourcing? You get a bunch of people, and since there are so many, it's fairly easy for them to do really, really big tasks. And this is the way that Wikipedia was built. But Wikipedia, or rather crowdsourcing, is not something, you, you, you can't just throw uh, content into Wikipedia and let the Wikipedia sort it out. That, that's not a good thing. It, crowdsourcing doesn't work like that. Crowdsourcing isn't good for everything. But here are a couple of things that crowdsourcing is actually good for. And um, one thing that we've noticed when, when um, galleries and libraries, archives and museums have uploaded images is that um, people have realized, oh, I know this person on this photo, and they add it to the information. They, uh, and, and we want to, of course, add that to your database as well. So we, we can do that sort of back and forth thing um, where we add to your database as well. There's nothing we like more to, uh, to make your stuff better as well. But th this is actually one of the things that crowdsourcing do very well. Um, to, to add and correct uh, mistakes because, honestly, can you say that your database doesn't contain any mistakes? Of course, they do. And the crowdsourcing is one way to correct that. Uh, another thing that crowdsourcing can do is discover new details. And by that, I don't mean the same thing as the previous one. We've actually seen that when, when people um, get a hold of images uploaded from, from, uh, from glam institutions, they tend to work on them. We've seen uh, people that have uh, looked very, very detailedly at images. They've, they've looked at 
for instance, uh, pictures from the American Civil War. And they discovered that the thing that everybody uh, at the museum, uh, at the Smithsonian, thought was just garbage was actually bodies, dead bodies. And, and we can do that because there are so many people that are interested in photo restoring. And so you could, you could use that. You could actually uh, take advantage of that there are people that want to work with this. And of course, as I said previously, we can take pictures for you. There are very many people, and uh, as the, the Austrian National Heritage Board discovered, we are fairly, fairly many when we want to. Um, I don't know how many people were in this week, uh, this year's uh, Wiki Loves Monuments, but the world record that was set last year is definitely going to be broken by almost a double. So we're, we're many people. And of course, one thing that crowdsourcing can do is make sure that other people know about you. And this is something that's a little bit controversial, so I'll, I'll try to tread very carefully here. But as I said previously, when you add um, citations to the end of an article, people can actually come and visit your site. Uh, and know more about you. Uh, we've seen many, many examples of, of this uh, previously. Okay, so right now I'm thinking that many of you are thinking about a couple of questions when it comes to collaborating with Wikipedia. And I, if I was a mind reader, I would say that the issue of money would be at the forefront of many people's minds. Because when it comes to free licenses and, and, and free stuff, the, the question of, of money always comes up. And when it comes to money, I, I, tend to, uh, I tend to show this picture. Have you seen this? This is a picture of an astronaut. Uh, he's doing an EVA, an extravehicular activity. It's outside in space. And do you know what country is from? Wild guess? The USA, yeah. And the reason for that is that everything that NASA produces when it comes to pictures, images, maps, and so on, is automatically put in the public domain. And I would state that they don't lose any money because of it. They actually earn money because of it, because if you try to recall the last time you've seen a picture from the European Space Agency or the Russian Space Agency or the Japanese Space Agency, I think you're going to have to go back quite a while before you find something, right? Oh, I'm sorry? Uh, is that fairly recent? Ah, okay, I'll, I'll have to update my slides then. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't know if everybody heard, but the European Space Agency have changed into Creative Commons as well, so good for them. But this is actually one thing. Um, and what about losing money when it comes to, to uh, publishing images that have great value? Well, we have some examples of that too. I don't know if, oh, this is the image. This is an image of Gustave Le Gray, who's a famous uh, uh, photographer from, uh, the, um, from the 1800s. He was one of the pioneers when it comes to photography. And they actually found this image, along with about a dozen others, uh, lying in an archive in Gothenburg, where, where I live. And they didn't know at first that they had this treasure trove. They, they'd had it for almost 70 years before anybody noticed that it said Gustave Le Gray at the bottom of the, of the photograph. And what did the archive do when they found this image? Well, they put it on commons. And if you don't know, Gustave Le Gray is the artist whose paintings have been sold for the highest bid at Sotheby's. You can do that as well. Okay, 
so um, let's see, how, how much time do I have left? Okay, so I'll have to round it off. I'm sorry? Okay, okay. So um, I'll just quickly then uh, tell you about this. This is uh, a book that we wrote, uh, or a booklet rather, uh, detailing what you can and can't do when it comes to uh, GLAM institutions, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Uh, so we produced this as a living document in Sweden. And the cool thing is, there's actually a German version. And you have that in your folder. So if you open your folder, you have that inside there. And it's going to teach you everything you need to know about free licenses and how to do it, what, what different kinds of collaborations you can have, and of course the, uh, the contact details to the German chapter. Okay, so that's my slide.